But let's move in now to the final topic, and we are going to welcome in our patron, Jake, onto the Fast Break Podcast. And we're going to be talking about the Atlanta Hawks and their first round draft selections. They have three picks currently in the first round of the NBA draft. They are slotted at fourth with their own pick. They also have Minnesota's pick, which is currently slotted at 19. They also have the Houston Rockets pick at 30. Jake, welcome back. How you doing? I'm doing all right. You know, I'm dealing with these two these two bozos, as you know, as we've been having a, a pretty good oh, conversation about if the uh, the Bulls could take on the 76ers in uh, the, the playoffs this year. Ricky calling for a sweep. Uh, but anyways, uh, we're talking about the, the, the Hawks this year. Um, looking at this, this great take race between Phoenix, Memphis, Orlando, Atlanta, you can even throw Dallas in there, uh, Brooklyn as well. Who do you think is going to come out on top of this? Do you think Atlanta has a shot at getting the number one overall pick? Anybody has a shot at getting the number one overall pick. I mean, the Kings can end up with the number one overall pick. But I think uh, in the end, the Suns will probably have the worst record. Memphis followed by them. I think it will basically say how it is. I think Atlanta will fall in that three or four range. All right. So, boys, if they're staying in that three or four range, we got to talk about the draft prospects that are going to be fitting for them. Looking at our mock draft last week with that 3.0, most of us had Luka Doncic going in the top two. We also had DeAndre Ayton in the top two as well. So that's putting mostly like most likely those two prospects out of those ranges, and we've also heard from the Atlanta Hawks camp, or at least some rumors out of the Atlanta Hawks camp, that they're not really sold on any of the guys they currently have in there that they're going to be sticking around. So looking at this, Jake, what do you think should be the strategy of the Atlanta Hawks in this draft at the three or four slot, which you said that they're going to be in? Well, I love building around defense, and I think who, in my opinion, is the second best player in the draft behind Aiton is Bamba out of Texas. I love what he brings as a two-way player. He's a great rim protector. He has the post game. Oh, he needs to work on it, obviously, but he has at least some of the post game. And his jump shot isn't terrible as well. And I think coming into the NBA, he'll transition pretty well. And I think building around defense, again, is a great way to build your team. And the Hawks have no building pieces right now, so I think he would be a pretty good place to start. Ricky, looking at the, the Hawks right now, we love Mo Bamba here on the podcast. I do, and I I was thinking as um, Jake was talking, I would love, like, if the Hawks were at, like, 7, It'd be like great. That's a sweet spot. You can go like Mo Bamba at three, two, three, four. That might be a reach for me because for me it comes down to yes, in our mock draft, I was the one that had Luca a little bit sliding, but most odds were assuming he's gonna go one or two. Aiton's gonna go one or two. So if they're at three and four, I think it comes down to you could take Bamba, but it's really what position are you gonna go with? Because like you said, if they're up where nobody is safe. What do you do at three? Do then you go with a Trey Young and say, you know what, we're going to revamp this team, go with a point guard because Dennis Schroeder's not our future? Are we going to go with a Bagley? Are we going to go with a Bamba? I think the safer pick right now would be Marvin Bagley. Let him be your four in the NBA. Or if you really like Bamba, go with that. Go with a big because I know you're not sold on everyone, but Dennis Schroeder is no joke. And he, you don't need to go and reach for a point guard and then try to find someone to get Schroeder from you. Dave, looking at the defensive thing that uh, Jake Mm -hmm, brought up, mm -hmm. I know that you are more sold on Jaron Jackson as a defender in the next level in the NBA. Do you think that they should go Jaron Jackson if they're going to go defensively? Why why would you say Jackson over Bamba in, in the case of the Atlanta Hawks? I think purely because Jackson has the ability to truly stretch the floor. I know Bamba has worked on it, and his shot is coming along, and I don't think it's something that he's going to have a – like. it's something he can definitely develop at the next level. But right now, Jaron Jackson Jr. has everything he needs to transition to the NBA and be that uh, stretch four, stretch five. He has a great rim presence, great um, ability to block the ball, like just active hands around the rim. And he doesn't have the size that Bamba does, but – if you look at the stats, if you look at his um, play style, he definitely has a knack for knowing when to go after it. The problem with ba- or the problem against Jackson that I can see where Bamba comes in better is the physicals. Like Bamba has wingspan, and Bamba doesn't get in foul trouble the way Jaron Jackson Jr. does. Like you always look at the if you look purely just stat wise, there's a reason why minutes wise Jaron Jackson Jr. has fairly limited minutes. Mm-hmm. It's not purely just because Michigan State likes to you know do units, do quick sub outs, and have those groups go together. It's because he can't stay on the floor for long periods of time because of his foul troubles. Michigan State is a better team, though. They do have much depth, where t- Texas was pretty much Mo Bamba, right. the Mo Bamba show for yeah. most, most likely that whole season, where you had Nick Ward, you had uh, Xavier as well coming off the bench for Michigan State. 
Um, Jake, looking at this, I'm big into just going with stars. I'm, I'm big into, you know, you brought up defense, and we see that with Buttonholzer before. We saw that with Horford and Millsap getting those two guys down low that were great defensively. Jeff Teague as well. Um, obviously not Kyle Korver, but he brought something to that team. Um, looking at this, though, I'm big into stars, and if you're rebuilding, you need that star. And looking at that fourth slot, we saw Michael Porter slip a little bit. We see some people in the comments calling me out saying that he's not going to be a star. What is your stance on, on Michael Porter Jr.? Do you think he's going to be a star at the next level? I think he could be a star. I don't want to judge him because I don't judge a guy off coming off of probably his biggest injury of his life playing two two games, I think it was. Mm-hmm. I don't want to judge him too much off of that, but I'm more so to Mo Bamba, and, I, and as I said, I like to build around defense, so I think Mo Bamba would be the better pick for them. But I think Porter will be... I don't know if a star, but I think he'll be a formidable player in the NBA. Did you, when you were watching him and, and looking at looking at him play, we were saying that he looked more like a four out there. Do you think that he's going to be more of a four than a three than what he was originally projected to be? I could see that. It depends on what team he falls to as well. Mm-hmm. And it's it's going to be interesting too because they do have John Collins there, and John Collins most likely isn't going to get moved. So he's that he's a guy that there at the you know the, the four right now that he could still be around there for the Atlanta Hawks. So it's going to be interesting. I think if they're going to go with a player and they're going to go around defensively, I would probably think it'd be Mo Bamba just because he's more of a natural five and Jackson is more of a natural four. Um, obviously, he can grow into a five as well, but mm-hmm. at least you know mm-hmm. looking at this, the, the typical structure, it would probably be Bamba at that five. Um, and, and going away from you know the bigs and def- defense, Ricky, you brought up Trey Young. Mm-hmm. What are we thinking about Trey Young right now? Because I mean, we saw that he, you know, late in the season started to struggle a lot, but again, his usage has been something unheard of. This guy has been, you know, putting so much pressure on, you know, at Oklahoma. I mean, this kid has the potential to be a star, but also he's six two and he's going to be a point guard in the NBA. There's a lot of physical guards in the NBA. Well, and the thing that's interesting about the Hawks in general when it comes to Trey Young, kind of bringing the two and merging them together, is. The Hawks have two other picks in this first round. They got right now the 19th and then the 30th overall. Yeah, I know there was a comment like, oh, they could trade up. But what if they keep those and hit on those two picks? Where we have seen guys go later in the first, go early in the second, and they turn out to be great players, good players for their teams. I think if they go Trey Young with their first pick, I would go and try to hit on those two other picks. Because the thing with Trey Young that I think is – I hate when people go, oh, he's not going to do anything at the next level. No, he's going to do something. He just needs the right team in the right situation where it's like if I always – I don't want to compare him like, oh, to Steph Curry, but Steph Curry in a way where if Curry didn't have Klay Thompson, if Curry didn't have Draymond Green, he's a completely different player out there and he's not winning championships like Golden State is. That's what Trey Young is. He's not going to be able to do it all himself. He's going to need a team around him. But he can be a great facilitator for any team he goes to. Yeah, I think that's entirely fair to bring up. And honestly, the the one concern is, you know, Trey Young is like Sean said that unprecedented usage level. Like that going to the Hawks team, do you think that that could be a concern? Because you know him on a very young team mm-hmm. with a very team centric coach. Like, could that be a problem, or do you think that that's like the perfect match for him? Well, I think that would probably be the perfect match for him because he's going to be able to be put into an NBA team setting where he's going to understand, but also we're going to see how comfortable he is, and he can get comfortable early. And then if he's not comfortable, then he can fall back on that team. And we have Tor- they have Torian Prince, they have John Collins. I mean, there's players still out there that can help him, but he's still a guy that can take over a game. And if he's able to build his confidence early and he's able to at least show what he's got early on, I think that might be best for a player like Trey Young. Um, and, and Jake, we're going to go to you since you're a resident uh, take commander, at least uh, you know process fan. Um, you've seen bad basketball over the past couple of years with the with the Philadelphia 76ers. TGP. You've oh, seen, you know, well, hey, I'm, I'm, hey, you guys are making the playoffs <laughs> this year, so I, it's not bringing up super sore wounds. You, know, you, guys, knew it, it yet. you guys knew what was going on. <laughs> um, but looking at it right now and, and looking at Trey Young and just thinking about players putting into you know that situation where there's not a huge team around them and the pressure that might be on them, do you think that Trey Young, looking at what he's done so far throughout his college career, could thrive in a situation where he's not going to have that team around him like you know your Sixers didn't have a couple of years ago? Well, to keep it PG, I freaking love Trey Young. I think he is going to be a stud in the NBA. I think that the reason he's fallen a little bit in mock drafts is because people are looking at the tournament he got out in the first round. But I think I tweeted this a couple of days ago, but that whole narrative of if you get knocked out in the first round or your team doesn't make the tournament, 
it does not mean anything. Ben Simmons is going to win Rookie of the Year this year, and he is by far the best rookie, and his team didn't even play in the tournament, didn't even play in the NIT. I think Trey Young needs the right pieces around him because I feel like you could see at the end of the year in Oklahoma his confidence was low. He was taking, okay, I don't want to say low, but his shots were not looking the same as they were in the beginning of the year because he was, I think I heard someone, they had 457 assists and he had 293 of them, and he was their leading scorer. I think I would say the perfect landing spot for him would be Cleveland if LeBron would come back, but LeBron isn't going to come back. I think he needs the right people around him to be able to thrive. I don't think he could uh, thrive with a team like the Hawks, but that's just... Well, and one thing I do want to throw out there, you're saying that LeBron's not coming back because he's going to be a Philadelphia 76er. Yes, correct. Okay, just want to make <laughs> just sure. to clarify for the fans. Well, exactly, because you know YouTube fans like to jump down our throats, so if we're, at least we're clear with our bias, people are going to respect it. Um, but thinking about what Jake just said, being a big fan of Trey Young out mm-hmm. here, thinking about you know having a team around him, do you think the Atlanta Hawks could be a place that he could thrive, Ricky, as you're yes, also the I do. Trey Young bandwagoner? The reason the why I say... <laughs> He could thrive is, like I said, they do have the other picks, either if they use those two picks or trade up and get somebody, let's say, in the top 15. If they use those two picks to trade up and move up, they get someone else. But you look at, I'm going to use the Warriors as the no cliche needed or the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I was going to say gold standard, but it's like a pun. Is that what I'm looking for? Golden State Warriors, gold standard. I'll gold take standard. it. Um, using them as the example Ste- it wasn't like, oh, we got Steph, Clay, and Draymond in one year. It was, no, we got Steph, then two mm-hmm. years later, all right, we drafted Clay, all right, then a year later, we drafted Draymond. Just because you're taking Trey Young in this draft doesn't mean you will have a complete team day one for him. And I don't think he's going to be a guy that, and it's a lot of these draft picks. I'm going to draft you. You're not going to come in day one and be our savior. You're going to have to develop in the league, and I think he's going to. He could work in Atlanta, but it then depends, all right, what's the draft plan to build around Trey Young and give him the pieces to where we don't have an Oklahoma situation? Well, let's build off that. Let's let's first end it with uh, who they're going to take with that mm-hmm. fourth overall pick as they're slotted right now with the fourth overall pick. Obviously, it's not going to be for sure that they're going to be taking the fourth overall pick, mm-hmm. but right now let's just you know play with take a thon and say they're mm-hmm. going to be the fourth overall pick. Jake? <laughs> Atlanta Hawks on the clock at number four. Uh, we'll say Doncic, Aiton, and uh, somebody else are off the board. <laughs> who, are the, who are the Hawks going with? <laughs> uh, they're going with Muhammad Bamba. Okay, so you th- you're going to go build around defense, so keep that in mind when we're talking about the 19th and 30th pick. Ricky, who are they going with at four? You know what? Originally, I was going to say either a Triple J or a Bagley, but the more I've heard Jake talk about Mo Bamba, I'm going to agree and say Mo Bamba there at four. Woo. And the reason why is... I've had this thought. I had this thought earlier on a primetime podcast, and someone in the comment section was like, "What are you talking about? There's no way he's like this player right now." But I look at Mo Bamba and like what he could be, mm-hmm. and everything I see with defense. If he adds that three, if he adds the body, I just see Anthony Davis. Like that's what I mm-hmm. see—a guy who can dominate this game, like we're seeing with the Pelicans. However, you need a full team because I see that that would be BPA for me. And I go with Mo Bamba. That's a high comparison oh, right there. Oh, yeah. Dave, you had <laughs> Mo Bamba outside of your top 10 in the 2.0. Yeah, that's because I don't believe defensive centers will win you anything. Okay, so f- with your fourth overall wrong. pick, are you going uh, Mo Bamba? I know I'm going Bagley, actually. You know, I'm kind of splitting I'm splitting this one because, honestly, I think he the high motor, the intensity, um, the ability to dominate inside all comes in handy. I think they're because they signed that deal with Schroeder to get him there for a couple more years, I think you play it out. I think Schroeder's an above-average uh uh, point guard in the league. Mm-hmm. I know his shot has been developing this year, especially because all of the pressure on him being like the only veteran on that team uh, left. But I think that Bagley would be a great fit to add to this team. And he's locked down for three more years. Yeah, sure is. And if I'm going fourth overall pick, I, I'm saying Luca and Aiton are off the board at three. I don't know what the hell the Orlando Magic are going to do. Apparently, Jake just sent me this on Twitter. Mm-hmm. But they're looking to fire Frank Vogel, so that's going to be a they're shake taking, up there. It's hey, the Magic. Oh, they're not. They're not letting Trey slip. They're I was saying thank you, thank you, Jake. You're a believer. All right, so it's either Trey Young there. Um, so that if Trey Young does go there, then at four, 
I if I'm the Hawks again, I'm looking for a star to build around. You're so going I'm, PJ. I'm going Michael Porter. Yeah. Yep. Again, I know people don't Preach. believe him. I know the the one kid from Mizzou. I keep forgetting his name. Keeps calling me an idiot, saying that he's watched <laughs> him this whole year. And hey, it's his opinion. He's he's totally worth having it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my opinion is that this kid can develop into a star. You're seeing a 70 percent Michael Porter Jr. He has the mentality of a star. He's calling for the ball late in games, even when he's not healthy. You know, people say that's going to be hurting your team, but that's what I want out there. I want a guy with that mindset. I want a guy who wants the ball in his hand and be that star. If I'm building a franchise, I'm going to take Michael Porter Jr. He's got the athleticism. Uh, when healthy, he's, he's, mm-hmm. he can be an absolute star. He's got the length. You could put him next to John Collins. Also, Dennis Schroeder can facilitate to him. Torrey Wall- Waller-Prince on the outside. A lengthy, decent scorer. I really like that. At least you know four guys right there. If Schroeder doesn't stay for that, that whole length of the contract, you still have... You know, again, Michael Porter Jr. to fall back on. But let's talk about the other picks. Really quick, I want to hot take it here. What if, though, he becomes ben, like a Ben Simmons, where it's like we draft him, red shirts that first year, and they get a prime pick and get Zion Williamson next year? I don't year. know if they need that's to a uh, red shirt. That's a Sixers special. I was going to say, I don't, I don't know if they need to red shirt well, him this you know year I mean. because they're going to suck again next year. Yeah, but like, you so, know what yep. I mean, where it's like we're not going to even, we're not going <laughs> to yep. force you into an injury. You're going to take this year and get your back right. Well, hold on. So if that we can draft He's somebody. already playing. The thing is, is that he's That's healthy. That's a Sixers special, all right? Nobody else does that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys Only copyrighted that along with TTP? Yeah, you see Mark <laughs> Phillips right now? It's the greatest plan. Oh, man. And, and that was one thing, too. I was thinking about this in the car. Mark Fultz, no one said that he was going to be a bust. No one said that, like, last year, like, we were, we were being called. Hold on, I'm not saying, I'm not yeah. calling him a bust, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like no, everyone was saying that he's a for sure thing, mm-hmm. and we haven't seen what he can fully do. Yep. And, like, that's something he's that, a like, sure thing. and then we were. And we were talking with you know about Jalen Brown a couple years ago, saying that he was going to be a bust. Now he's probably the best player right now out of that draft. One of the best players out of that draft class because I want to watch yourself. Slight, watch yeah, yourself. Ben watch Simmons. It. But I'm just saying, like again, we don't know what these guys are going to be. We can yeah. see what they're going to happen. But I, I, again, looking at what Michael Porter has, the skill set that I've seen him have, I think that he's going to be a star in the, mm-hmm. this league. So that's why I would say no, I go with Atlanta you. there. I could see it uh, at four. But let's move now to 19 and 30. Uh, they have the Minnesota pick at 19 and the, the uh, Rockets pick at 30. The talk is, and Ricky's brought this up a couple times, should they trade up? Jake, if you're going to build a team around defense, you're going to build a team around, uh, you're, you're picking Mo Bamba, do you think you need to trade up, or would you rather have two young players that you can possibly put into that defensive lineup you're trying to build? Well, if you can trade up, it depends who you're willing to trade up, because um, I think Mikael Bridges from, is that how you say his name? I can never say his Mikhail. name. Mikael. Mikael. Mikael, right. that one, yeah. <laughs> from Villanova, I think he is also kind of the prototype 3 and D player that you look at in the NBA today. So, I mean, if you could trade up, he's going to go probably anywhere between 8 and 12 would be my guess. Okay. Um, I think he's the prototype 3 and D player. He's the guy I want the Sixers to get really bad, but <laughs> probably won't. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I think if you could, you trade up, but it depends how far you could trade up. Let's say, like, you look at a team, I don't know, uh, let's say L.A. Clippers, since they have two picks, maybe they want to move back. At. And try to get some 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 more assets. Let's say they get to that like twelve or thirteen spot. So that puts them in the range of last last uh, last podcast. I think we had Shea Gilgis Alexander around there. Mm-hmm. We had Wendell Carter Jr. around there. Kevin Knox fell around there. Um, are, those are the type of players. Do you think it's worth it to go up there, or would you think you know just having those assets of those two players would be more worth it? I think if you could get up and get one of the bridges, that'd be. Okay. The best, but if you can't get one of them, I don't really think Kevin Knox is worth trading up that high. That's fair, Ricky. You've been bringing up the trade up thing. Are you, are you, you gonna know, do it? Are you gonna pull the trigger? The thing, the team, the first thing I thought of was mm-hmm. who would they trade up with? Because like the Clippers, mm-hmm. you mentioned them. I think them and the Suns. It's gonna come down to to me. There'll be three teams: Clippers, Suns, and Hawks. It's like all right, which one of those teams is moving up? Because they've got the double pick. Mm-hmm. More likely, it's probably gonna be either the Hawks or the Suns. I don't know. If anyone really high from the Clippers are going to be like, yeah, I'll take your two picks to give you maybe a top five, top six pick. But the pick I look at is the Hornets. And the reason why is if the Hawks already know we're not going to compete next year and we're going to be bad, if you really like a guy at 11, let's say a Gilgis Alexander, let's say if Kevin Knox is still there, let's say if Colin Sexton is still on the board, if you really like a guy at 11 – why not say, hey, we're going to be bad next year. Let's trade these next two picks, get the guy that we like, and the only bad thing is we might have to take on a contract or two that the Hornets want to dump off. Mm-hmm. And it would basically be you're letting us get the 11th pick and we're taking some contracts that you don't want 
and you don't want to have on your team salary. Yeah, I mean that's probably going to be the most likely thing is you're, you're going to take a Nick Batum, you're going to take a Marvin Williams, mm-hmm. uh, a player like that, and try to get him off the hands of Charlotte. I think that'd be a nice move for Charlotte. But then again, we talked about Colin Sexton probably falling in there. Uh, he Dave. could, yeah. So mm-hmm. I mean, like it, it, it's going to be tough to find a, a, a for sure suitor. But I'm in the mindset of keep those two picks at 19 and 30, and get players that will fit into your team. We saw last year that uh, Josh Hart went late in the first round. We've seen uh, Malcolm Brogdon go late in the first round. You know, a guy that fits that mold right now, Javon Carter, he can be a backup uh, point guard for you at that 30 spot. And then at 19, we see these guys like Anthony Simmons, Mitchell Robinson, these young high school players that are coming out early and saying, like, I'm going to try to be an NBA player. They're still young. You can mold them into the system that you want. I'm more of the, the idea of, Try to hit on the potential at 19-30, maybe even a Hamadou Diallo mm-hmm. at 30. Are you in the same boat as as that, or are you thinking trade-up too? You are reading my mind as far as right now this team needs players. They need bodies in there. They don't need to trade up for a second swing at you know a guy in the top 10 talent because you're already going to get a top 5 pick probably. We'll see how the, the ping-pong balls roll for them. But I think right now if you can add two more picks in that first round, you go for it. and that second round pick is thirty three. So like again, you are not far off of having three picks in the f- three picks right in that grouping. Mm-hmm. It's very nice, and I think you could get a lot of guys like you said. There are veteran players in the NCAA who would be an instant asset to this team who could get on the court, play serious minutes for them, and look pretty well. And on the other hand, like you said, Anthony Simmons is the guy that I'm looking at mm-hmm. with that nineteenth pick. I, I've heard rumors going up and down if he's going to sneak into late lottery, and the other people are like, no, he's probably like 25 range. So I think that's prime range at 19 right now. If you could get a player like him who you can develop, who you can build muscle, get him smarter, get him bigger, he is a guy who could develop really well into the NBA. You know what I'm thinking? What's the more and more I look at what players could be around for these next two picks, mm-hmm. I kind of think that Trey Young wouldn't be a bad pick with the one we talked about earlier because – Looking at who could be there, yeah, if you go with a big, you can go with like a Lonnie Walker and then later on maybe like a Jalen Brunson or a Devontae Graham for point guard. Or you can say, hey, we're going to take Trey Young. Then at 19, Mitchell Robinson's there. There's our big. And then at 30, this is the one that might need a little bit of luck. Or you can take 30 and 33 to try to trade above someone and take a Kyrie Thomas. There's your defense. You have your point guard in Trey Young, and you have a big, mm-hmm. young big in Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, I, I'm just more going going the asset of getting two players. And if I'm going Michael Porter Jr. at four, then I'm looking at that 19 spot. I want a, a guard at some point, either yeah. one or two. A guy that we talked about, Anthony Simmons, a combo guard at 19. Again, if you think that you need to move up, you still have that 33 pick to move up, get the 19 and 33, and move up. You know where Denver is, and possibly jump on a mm-hmm. couple teams. Like that could be a team. And then at 30. I want a veteran, so I'm going to look at Javon Carter. I'm looking at Grayson Allen. I'm looking at Jalen Brunson. I think those are the players that really stick out in my mind that could possibly help this Atlanta Hawks team. Jake, are there any players that just in this whole you know back half of the lottery or you know outside of the lottery, are there any players that are really catching your eyes? I know you mentioned Mikael Bridges, uh, Trey Young. You're really liking those guys. Are there any guys deep like that 15 to 30 range that you're really digging and that you think might fit for the Hawks? I like uh, I like Gary Trent Jr. out of Duke. I think he's a good prospect, a little bit six six guard. He can he can play defense. He can shoot the three. Mm-hmm. I I don't like Grayson Allen. I don't like him at all. <laughs> Do you like he's his play? The competition. Remove no. the name from him. You, you don't, don't like, like his. You play. don't like his trips and his hip checks, man. He's that, gonna play Final speak College to game tonight. So I mean, it's, oh, I, we'll see. Probably not, but <laughs> uh, I I think again going by defense. I think he brings good three and D defense, and I don't think. They need to reach for a guard with their first pick. I think Dennis Schroeder is fine, but if they really wanted to reach for a guard with that 30 or 33 pick, Tony Carr out of Penn State is Ooh. a pure scoring guard. I like him a lot. Uh, but, yeah, I think Gary Trent Jr. And I think even if, even if you want to pick a guard with the 19 pick, I think Trayvon, uh, Trayvon Duvall would be a nice pick. Interesting. I'm not he, totally sold on Simmons. Trayvon Duvall, can you give us your thoughts on him? Because he's somebody who's kind of slid down our board uh, as the season's progressed. We were mm-hmm. really high on him early in the season. He fell out. He fell out. Yeah. Can yeah. you give us a... I think, uh, yeah. I think he's a very raw prospect, and I think he's another... Um, he's he's kind of fallen victim to the fact that he's their like fifth option on offense because he's playing with th- two two lottery picks and Grayson Allen, who's a fourth-year he's a fourth year senior. Mm-hmm. So I think he's just kind of fallen down because he's playing his role with the team. But I think, again, he even in, as the fourth or fifth option, he's still putting up 10 points per game. He's still getting his six assists. 
he's playing pretty efficiently. I mean, I like him, but I don't think he's a stud, but he could easily be a bench scorer. But and that's one. That's one thing when I look at him too. Is is you you think of look at him as a fifth option. You're like you see the numbers he's putting up. But then you're questioning: Is it because of the four other players around him in in Trent Jr., Grayson Allen, uh, Wendell Carter, and Bagley? Uh, that's why I'm I'm thinking and looking at Trayvon Duvall. You know, maybe if he comes out, if he doesn't come out, maybe you know if he tr- tests the combine and then comes back and he doesn't like a spot, he might be a player that hey, if he comes back and you know with Zion Williamson. Uh, R.J. Barrett, uh, I can't think of the other guy right now, uh, but they, they he pairs up. And that's starting, yeah, thank you. Uh, they, they stay stay up in uh, in that lineup, and he's he's like their their leader at least uh, offensively, just being a sophomore because mm-hmm. I mean, there's gonna be three uh, freshmen in that that lineup. I think he could possibly be a guy that not puts himself in the lottery next year, but at least improves his draft stack where maybe he's a 17th. Uh, you know, pick or maybe he's 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 nearing in on that lottery just because he's going to have the ability to shine a little bit more, and he's still going to have decent players around him because he's got the top three, uh, yeah, top three <laughs> prospects coming out of uh, coming out of high school. But on the flip side of that, he could grace an Allen. Where last year, I think you and I, I, I want to say the Clippers, whatever pick they had, yeah. like twenty something, we had them, and now this year it's because of all the talent they have. He's what second rounder, late first, depending on what mock draft I think, you look at. I think that's more attached Still to his 20. name. Like he's not gonna purely because of his name is little reputation. Column, there's no way he can B. get higher than what he yeah. is. Uh, see, for me, like what I see in Trayvon Duval is he looks like Alfred Payton with a better wingspan and better body, mm-hmm. like and less stupid hair, obviously. Mm-hmm. But that's my concern. <laughs> you can like, actually I, see through. The I hair. think that's the whole thing is when you look at these <laughs> bottom picks, you have to set your expectations right. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to swing for a home run? Are you trying to fill out that bench, build out that roster deeper? Like. Are you going for the uh, Raptors style where they're like, we're going to make this a deep roster and we're going to be competitive all the game, like every single game. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what this Hawks team can do. They can go out and get guys who they're going to get at a pretty big discount late in this draft because they're not necessarily going to have that star power you know, potential to them, but they're going to be excellent role players and be able to fill the needs for this Hawks team. Jake, we do this on every single podcast. Final thoughts about the Atlanta Hawks draft. They're still going to suck next year. <laughs> Fair wow. enough. <laughs> no matter what they do, <laughs> right. I mean they have they have they have. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're good. You know, what are you saying? I would say they have a ton of options. They they are full. They are one of the only teams that are in a full. They have literally probably zero building pieces. You might be able to say Dennis Schroeder, John Collins, but neither of them are going to be stars. So they could go anywhere with us. Mm-hmm. Ricky, final. They're thoughts. a team that's got it. Their building block has to be taken at four. Whoever you're taking. That's who we're building around. That's who has to be. Right now, it's their fourth overall pick. David? Uh, I think, yeah, it, it's pretty much blank canvas plus Schroeder. Uh, and that one, the problem is, even if you, you might not get top value when you try to ship them out because there's so many good point guards in this league. So I think, you, you like Ricky said, building block plus and just go to town and free agency. you got money to blow. And uh, my final thoughts is exactly what Ricky said. If you're going to go with four, got to get a building block of your franchise, and that's why I'm going Michael Porter Jr., just because of the star talent. Uh, but anyways, Jake, we want to thank you for being on. That's going to wrap up the podcast. If you want to be like Jake... I got Jake, one quick uh, question. Jesus, I said wrap it up. And this is well, this, <laughs> this has nothing to do with the Hawks. I just want to ask this in draft All right. kind of talk, oh, and I God. wonder what Jake thinks. Listening today to different podcasts, there's people that think this is a tinfoil hat, mm-hmm. that the league Name is going to say... that I can't remember which one. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. That basically, let's say Memphis, <laughs> because oh, they've been tanking... Hey, you know what? We're gonna rig the lottery to where you don't get the number one pick. Well, I mean, it, is it possible that the NBA does that? Like, do you think knows? the NBA would really do that and say, like, well, you've been tanking, yeah. you don't get the if number one pick? If you tinfoil hard enough, I'm sure there's there's reason to believe this stuff. All I know is the Kings aren't gonna get one, the Suns aren't gonna get one, the Bulls just aren't. because that's a proven thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna worry about those two. The other teams, I think it's <laughs> up in the air. Well, and then also if they if they are rigging it or whatever, mm-hmm. that could give the Bulls a pick. Because, yeah, because they've already yelled at us. Because they are yelled publicly. at us. Oh, um, they're not going to give it to Memphis because no one wants to play in Memphis. They'll just um, give it to the Sixers. Yeah, it'll probably be the Sixers. What? Again. We, we had the number one pick. We never had the number one pick. <laughs> it would either be. Never. It would either be oh, the, wait, that's right. Because if they give it. Simmons, no, wait. Right. It's a yeah, Timothy Ray Ball. Yeah. GT. I was, I was going to say if they give you the number one pick, it goes to Boston, but that's if it's a two or a three. Yeah. yeah, number one, two, still three, six. Two through, two through five. Yeah. <laughs> or, or it'd probably just be Brooklyn and just give LeBron a, a nice new toy to play with. Uh, but anyways, that's going to wrap up the podcast. If you want to be like Jake, uh, hit up patreon.com slash podcast. We want to thank Jake for his support and jumping on, talking about the Atlanta Hawks. And Jake, I do want to extend our best wishes from the Most Valuable Podcast family to your 76ers when they make the playoffs. Thank you for that. I appreciate <laughs> you it. You don't think they will? I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Magic yeah. numbers one. Not to jinx it. All right. <laughs> Magic numbers one. 
Magic numbers one. Oh man, that's that's close. We'll see if that <laughs> we'll see if they blow and choke the lead. Maybe they, maybe they'll redshirt the their whole team. What's that? They're not the Bulls. Hey, Bulls made it in the playoffs last year. Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> I, and I predicted that. Remember that? Yeah, you did. Yeah, that was impressive. <laughs> that was the tinfoil. But anyways, if you want to be like Jake, head over to patreoncom podcast. Also check out mostvalpodcast.com. If you want to check out our store, uh, we also are revamping with new logos. Check out that MVP hype trailer. That's gonna be dropping mm-hmm. on Monday, March 26th. Might even be already out. Um, and also, final thing is rate us five stars on iTunes. Fast Break Podcast, The Onside Kick, The Prime Time Podcast, and the Rick and Johnny Podcast, as well as the Outcast. And mm-hmm. also. Check out the podcast, the new podcast with MVP Buzzweed and Juice Man. Juice Man? Uh, Juice Man. Uh, over there. Juice. Um, <laughs> at the Outcast. But anyways, for Dave Oster, for Ricky Wimmer, for Jake the the GOAT patron. I'm going to say it. In my, in my humble opinion. I'm not, gonna, I'm not playing favorites here. Was he here, the OG? But he's the, well, he's the only one that comes on our podcast. So Fair he's, enough. He's, <laughs> you're right. You're right. So he's the, he's the only one that matters. Uh, and I am Sean Anderson. We will see you Damn right. next time. Damn right.